Well, greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to this companion video here on my YouTube channel. I'm your host, John Campia. So what is a companion video? Well, I'm glad that you asked. See, every day on the John Campia Show and in the afternoons on Open Mic, we take time to take live questions, but we don't always have the time to get around to all the live questions that get sent in. I want to make sure those questions get answered, so we gather up those unused questions, and we bring them over here and address them on the companion video. So, without any further ado, let's just dive right into it and start getting caught up here. And the first one we're going to take a look at here comes to us from Zach Book Book Atz, who writes... What is the saddest movie you have ever seen slash made you cry the hardest? Mine is Ladder 49 with John Travolta and Joaquin Phoenix. That's easy. I always say there's only been just a couple of films that have ever actually made me cry. One of them, most notably, and does it every single time, is the film Life is Beautiful. Uh, it's an Italian film by Roberto Benigni. It got nominated for Best Picture. I, Benigni got nominated for, he might have won Best Actor, but he's also nominated for like Best Director. The movie is outstanding. The whole th premise is it's set during World War II, and this Jewish man and his family get put into a concentration camp. He's got his little son, but he convinces his son that this is all a one big game that they're playing, right? Trying to protect him from the cruelty of life and try to let his son see that life is beautiful. And it's one of the greatest movies ever made. I, I just love it, but that's the one that makes me cry the most, no doubt. Uh, all right, Sebastian writes, what movie character would you most want to avenge your death? John Wick, etc." Well, it doesn't really matter, does it? You're dead. So <laughs> it doesn't really matter. I guess, theoretically speaking, John Wick would be a good one. I mean, Superman would be a great one, but he's not going to kill somebody. Not not out of just pure vengeance. Um, I don't know. I'd have to think about that. But John Wick's a good choice. Uh, Gabriel Reed writes, Do you think the Skrulls have been in other MCU films since the events of Captain Marvel? I think it's certainly possible. Oh, it's absolutely possible. The Skrulls, you know, in the comics lore, they impersonate human beings and all that kind of stuff. But So a lot of people have been wondering... Ever since it became official that Skrulls were actually going to be in Captain Marvel, a lot of people wondering, could some step, maybe even a core MCU character, could there be an established character in the MCU that this whole time has been Skrull or multiple characters? Is it a possibility? Well, if you know anything about the Skrulls, it's possible. I don't know that that's the way they're going to go. I don't know that that's what they're actually going to do with it. But, again, you're absolutely right, Gabriel. It's certainly possible. Now, look, I don't think we're going to find out that Captain America has been a scroll the whole time or that Tony Stark has been a scroll the whole time or, or that, you know, uh, uh, Black Widow has been a scroll the whole I don't think anything like that. But a side character that's popped up a few times here and there? What was the name of that female Asian uh, scientist that was in Age of Ultron? You know, the one that went, is Thor going to be there? Like that that girl? Like maybe a character like that. Um, it's possible. Again, I wouldn't put my money on any of the key central characters, but somebody, it's possible. I'd set the over-under as high as like 20%. I'd give it a solid 20% chance that that's the case. We'll have to wait and find out though. Uh, Ivan Pietro writes, over or under 30% that Aquaman makes more than Justice League at the box office, way under. Uh, I, I'll give it, look, I think Aquaman can do business, but it's not going to make more than Justice League, but it's, it's just not. It's got too many other things working against it. Forget the fact that, hey, we already had a movie with Aquaman and Superman, Batman and Wonder Woman and all these popular characters, and it only made six fifty. No reason to assume that a, a Aquaman movie now on his own is going to make more than that. But also remember, is this black hole of a release date. It's opening in December 21st. It's opening the same week as Mary Poppins. That's going to make a hell of a lot of money. Bumblebee with the director of Kubo and the True Strings. That movie's going to make a hell of a lot of money. You got um, Alita Battle Angel, whose last trailer actually looked great. Not like the first trailer, which looked terrible, but the first one, looked, the second one looked great. Some people are going to go see the Will Ferrell comedy with John C. Riley, Holmes, and Watson. Some people are going to go see uh, the Steve Carell film, Welcome to Marwin. And these are all films coming out on the same week. That is going to limit how much a movie like Aquaman can make. 
So, yeah, I, I would take the under on 30% on that. I, I And look, it can do okay. Look, if Aquaman makes like $440 million, that's great. That's great. I think you consider that a win. More than six fifty, I doubt it. I, I have serious doubts it'll make more than uh, Justice League. Uh, Angry Irish Benjamin writes, Probably going to ruffle some feathers, but I don't like the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie for the most part. Nevertheless, the second one was an improvement, and I enjoyed their involvement in Avengers Infinity War. I, yeah, I agree about their inv uh, 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 involvement in Avengers Infinity War. I like their involvement a lot. I will disagree with you about the other two, though. But that's, hey, that's the fun part. That's the subjectivity of film, right? I thought the first Guardians was a revelation. I loved the first Guardians. I can't get enough of that movie. I just dig it. Not thrilled with the second one. Second one's good. It's a good, it's a good film. It's, it's a thumbs-up film. But to me, it was a significant step down from the first Guardians. But I agree, I really do like their involvement in the Infinity War. But then again, that's the beauty of the subjectivity of film. You saw these films, it hit you a certain way. I saw them, it hit me a different way. And we get to share our differing points of view. I love that. So thanks for sharing that, Irish. All right, next. Ben Rayner writes, what movie is this from? We've got a bleeder. Oh, that's something about Mary. I, well, actually, you know, it could have been from several different movies. But the line... Uh, when I think about the line, we got a bleeder. I, that's from the opening of There's Something About Mary. Uh, when uh, Ben Siller, you know, they try to unzip his sack out of the zipper. And like, we got a bleeder. It's a hilarious moment. Uh, Angry Irish Benjamin follows up. Chiefly, Gunn's take on Ronan the Accuser struck me as flat. Uh, thinly drawn uh, grab bag of jabs at RL Terrace. Hope he uses he's used better in Captain Marvel. I again I'm gonna disagree with you, but that's the subjectivity of film. I'm gonna disagree with you. And you know what? Angry. I think there are a lot of people who love Guardians of the Galaxy who would agree with you that not one of their favorite parts was Ronan. There's a bunch of people who didn't like Ronan in that movie. Even people who love Guardians of the Galaxy. For me, I actually love the Ronan character. I really did. I love the the kind of the persona that Lee Pace brought to him. Um, I love that they did that classic sort of, hey, he was just a guy who was molded by pain and 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 hate because of what happened to him and his family, and that molded him. And he was so steadfast, and then at one point even willing to turn on Thanos and like threaten Thanos that he was going to come after Thanos. I'll tell you what, I, I like the character a lot, but you are not alone, Angry Irish. There, there are a bunch of people, even big fans of Guardians, that didn't like the way Ronan was used, but me personally, I'm actually quite a big fan of it. Uh, Stubble McShave writes, There is no way, no way! That you could come from my loins. As soon as I get home, the first thing I do is punch your mama in the mouth. A lot of people have been quoting some great lines from Smokey and the Bandit. Uh, um, Jackie Gleason, of course, that's one of the funnier lines. Somebody else brought up the same line uh, this week, as a matter of fact. But that is what there is no way you are from my loins. That there's so many great lines in that movie, man. If you haven't seen Smokey and the Bandit, the original, with uh, uh, I almost said Ryan Reynolds, with um, with Reynolds and um, uh, Jackie Gleason. Make sure you check it out. Like the great immortal Burt Reynolds. Go go. make sure you go watch it. Uh, Chef Cook writes, Hey John, have you ever yelled in a movie theater at something you saw on screen that made you mad? I'm assuming you mean mad, not made. Or shocked you or scared you? Um, I'm not a big... Oh, this is one of the reasons why I would be boring to watch as a trailer reactor. I'm, I'm not a reactor. Because I, I don't, you know, a lot of the stuff doesn't show on my face. Like when I'm in a movie, like if there's a jump scare, yeah, I'll go like this, just like anybody else. But like my brother-in-law, Ray, who does most of my graphics, Ray is the most demonstrative person I've ever seen in a movie. What are you doing? What are you, like I'll be in a movie theater with him, right? He's like, what are you doing? Don't go in there. Don't go in there. Like he's like. He is like, so, and then when something cool happens in action, oh yeah, and he'll look around at other people in the movie theater, oh yeah, like, he is just, he's a hoot to watch a movie with, but I'm not like that, um, which is one of the reasons why I don't do react videos, because I, I don't, I'm not, woo, kind of thing, you know what I mean, at least not most of the time, so maybe it's happened, 
but I can't think of any off the top of my head, Chef. Uh, Bryce Walters writes, when do you think we'll get an official rating for Venom? I think it'll be rated R, uh, well, just two days ago. So obviously this question came in just before two days ago. Uh, we found out that it is officially PG-13. But you know, they gave us a hint weeks ago. There was a big story, I believe it was the Hollywood Reporter, where they were talking with uh, it, it might have been Forbes. Anyway, one of the big major trades did a story about it. And they talked about how they were talking to the Sony executives. And the Sony executives kind of kind of laid it out that they were probably going for PG-13. And it was probably going to be a PG-13 because one of the main reasons is, well, there's no need for Venom to be rated R. Because mostly, remember, most of the time, the R rating comes from... Uh, a lot of coarse language and a lot of sex stuff, whether it's implied or talked about or explicit, whatever. We don't need any of that in Venom. None of that would make Venom a better movie. And we know you can get away with a hell of a lot of violence in PG-13. So fine. That was one of the other reason they said was because they want to make sure it'll be easier. You can't have Spider-Man in an R-rated film. So they want to make sure they created their universe in such a way that Spider-Man can step in and do that. Is that an indication that they're bringing Spider-Man back from the MCU? Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. But they kind of gave us indicators a while ago that they were going to be doing that. So it is now official. Venom is a PG-13. And I think that's perfectly fine. Uh, Angry Irish follows up with, You want answers? I think I'm entitled. Oh, this is from A Few Good Men. You, uh, I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Like one of the most iconic movie lines ever. Not just iconic lines from a Jack movie or from a Cruise movie. The you can't handle the truth is one of the top 10, at worst, top 20. At worst, top 20. Probably top 10. Greatest, most iconic single lines in the history of cinema. Even people who have not seen A Few Good Men, and you should watch A Few Good Men, have seen and know the line of Jack Yellen, you can't handle the truth. Like that's, that's like iconic forever and always, man. Forever and always. Uh, Jonathan Teft writes, with the sad passing of Burt Reynolds, did you see his last movie that came out this year, The Last Movie Star? It's a total love letter to him and that era of Hollywood, and it's really good. You know, no, I did. and never made it to theaters, but I've seen the trailer for it, and it looks wonderful. He's this aged former movie star. It, it kind of looks like the trailer's like about him in many ways, but he's an aged older movie star. And, oh my gosh, who was playing his agent again? Somebody great was playing his agent, and I can't remember who it was now. But anyway, um, and he gets this invitation because he's being honored at this particular film, at some little film festival, right? And the agent really says, you should go, you should go, go accept the honor. And because a bunch of other big name people have received the honor before, right? So he goes there, and it's some little college campus film festival that like 50 kids go to. He's like, I came out here for this. Like, and all these other iconic names who've received the honor never actually showed up to get it. But he showed up for it. And the kind of movie is built around that. Uh, it's got um, Clark Duke is in it, who was in the uh, Hot Tub Time Machine movies. And it looks really good. It does look really good. Uh, I haven't checked it out, but I plan on it because it just got put on my radar like about a week ago. But I'm, I'm planning on checking it out. I, I can't, I don't know which streaming service it's on. I'll have to find that out. But it does look really, really interesting. So I haven't seen it yet because it was never in theaters. But um, I am going to check it out because it looks pretty fascinating. Uh, 1215 Hayabusa writes, uh, Has anyone noticed that Bumblebee is a Jeep as well as a VW Beetle in the trailer? I did not notice. No. Are you sure? Like, are you sure it was B and not another Transformer? Because there is a Jeep. If the Jeep was green, and I can't remember, if the Jeep was green, there's a good chance it might have been, uh, oh, who was uh, Hound? Could have been Hound. Um, 
But I no, I don't recall that. But I, my, what I would ask is, are you sure? Like you, maybe you saw a Jeep and a Jeep Transformer, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was Bumblebee. Maybe it was. I don't remember seeing it, but now I'm going to have to go back and double check. If you guys have seen the trailer and you know what 1215 is talking about, jump down to the comment section and, and let me know what he's saying there. Or let me know what you saw there. Uh, Bryce Walters writes, does a movie have to be big for a red carpet to take place? For example, Avengers 3. Oh, no, no, no. Tons. Almost every movie has a red carpet. Like, but there, there are there are red carpets like a Star Wars premiere, like an Avengers premiere, things like that, where they shut down Hollywood Boulevard. And they, there's those, and then there's smaller red carpets. Like there's this movie theater in Hollywood that a lot of people go to. It's called the ArcLight Cinemas in Hollywood. A lot of people go to it. They got a little courtyard in the front doors, right? A lot of times, a lot of films will do their premieres there. And it's a small thing, but what they'll do is in the courtyard, they'll set up this, a red carpet that's like, I don't know, 50 feet long, like 50 feet long. And it's a smaller little affair and the red carpet's very short, but they, you know, the press will be there to take photos and ask some questions and blah, blah, blah. And they'll just go through the line and then go into the theater and go up to theater 12 or whichever cinema in Arclight their movie's playing in. So you can get these big things and, and you can get very small red carpets, but yeah, every movie likes to have a red carpet to celebrate the opening of their film, even if it's not for all the media, it's really just for them, but they will usually have a red carpet. But there's a, there are red carpets, and then there are red carpets, like a Star Wars movie. So not all of them get the big treatment, but most of them will do something at least small or something, or something like that. Uh, Stubby McShave writes, uh, Burt Reynolds tells great stories on Favreau's Dinner for Five. Oh yeah, I, I've never seen that one. I gotta check that one out. That sounds really good. Uh, Tristan Sheehan writes, saw 2001 at a small local theater with an intermission in the middle. I went with my dad who last saw it 40 years ago. Oh, that's special, man. Uh, in the theater and I loved it. First of all, I always get jealous and envious of people who get to watch classic movies for the first time. Because, right, that's never something you can do again. I can never see Star Wars again for the first time. I can never watch 2001 A Space Odyssey again for the first time. I, I can never have that experience again. So I'm always a little bit envious. But the fact that you got to have your first experience with a movie like 2001 in a movie theater, that's special, man. And the fact that you got to watch with your dad who hadn't seen it for 40 years, that's extra special. Yet another reason why... Movies are experiential events that are even better when you experience them and they're more special when you experience them with other people like your dad. That's a great story, man. Thank you for sharing that, dude. That's awesome. All right. ZCM uh, Zombie Custom Maps writes, have you listened to Eminem's new album? It's D1. I'm not quite sure what you're saying. Anyway, uh, I have. I wasn't paying a lot of attention to it because I think it was the day it dropped was on our Dungeons and Dragons night and we had it on in the background as we were all just hanging out and even while it was playing in the background where we were playing D&D. &D. So I wasn't paying a lot of attention to it. I believe I liked it. Uh, obviously then there's the Venom track too, but, but I wasn't paying really close attention to it. But I was liking what I was hearing, but I haven't sat down and really listened to the new album yet. I'll do that at some point soon. Uh, Raymond Verrata writes... Congrats to John Legend, Tim Rice, and Andrew Lloyd Webber as the new EGOT. Yeah, so winners for their Creative Emmy win for Jesus Christ Superstar. So the EGOT, for some of you who haven't heard of it, the EGOT is the probably most difficult thing in entertainment to win. The EGOT is a collection of awards. The EGOT stands for Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony. TV, um music for Grammys or the audio recording stuff, Oscars and the Tonys, which is for stage shows, live, live stage productions, Broadway and things like that. There, it is the most exclusive club in the business. The e, those who have actually won the EGOT people who have won all four, an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar and a Tony. And apparently we've got a few more people. John Legend just joined that. There was a, a, another guy joined it last year. I only think that I, I think there's only like eight or nine people in history who have the EGOT. It's a crazy thing. So that is a huge accomplishment. Uh, R Squared Games writes, If The Witcher show is actually good, that's a big if, 
Would it count as a win for video games since the mo since the games are actually based on a series of novels? I would say yes because of this. They ain't they ain't doing this show because of the novels. If it wasn't for the video games and the popularity of the games, they would not be this show would not be getting made. Let's just be clear about that. That's obvious, right? The only reason anybody cares about this is because of the games. So, yes, I would say if the show's good, and again, that's a huge if, I do I think that counts both as a win for the novels, but yes, more directly to your question, I would personally consider it as a win for video for the video game genre. Cause then there ain't many wins for video games being trans translated into narrative storytelling like TV shows or movies that are any good. Basically almost never. Um, so yeah, I myself, I would count it as a win because that's the only, that's the reason the show's getting made. That's what we all think of. So yes, I would count it as a win for video games. Uh, Static Space Sean writes, I like that name. Also, you should definitely get Spider-Man PS4. I got the Spider-Man Edition console. It's an amazing game. Hope you were able to check it out. Well, you know, it's funny, my buddy Ryan, uh, who plays with us in our D&D group, and he's, he's, he's family to Ann and I, Ryan's family. To me, Ann and and, uh, and Ray. Um, he bought, I went over to his place the other day, and he bought the Spider-Man PS4 edition. It looks awesome. And I watched him play Spider-Man 4. He loves it. It seems like a great game, but I don't play console games. Mostly because all the video games I play are mostly right here on a, on a PC. I play most of my games... Pardon me, on computer. Because I'm a mouse and keyboard guy. I've never really been able to get my brain uh, to work with with a controller. I just don't like it. And, you know, to be honest, yeah, part of it's just that I've never given it enough time to really adjust to learn to use, like, controllers better. Um, but I like using mouse, like, whether it's my first-person shooters, whether it's games like Warcraft, whether it's whatever, I just prefer using a keyboard and mouse. It's a far superior way to play a game, in my opinion, at any rate. Unfortunately, Marvel Spider-Man is not available on PC to play. So, I'm probably not going to play it myself. I'm not, I was thinking I'd run out and get a PlayStation 4 to play it, but when I saw that it's, it is a complex thing to use... Uh, I thought, nah, I'm not going to drop 400 bucks, buy this PS4 system with this game, and then play it twice, and then get frustrated with trying to use the, the controller. So, yeah, so I, I didn't get it, and I'm probably not going to get it. But the game does look amazing. Uh, Watch Your Magician writes, What Marvel character solo film do you think will be next to cross the $1 billion mark at the box office? Other than Captain Marvel or a sequel. Thanks for everything, John. Oh, like if you're taking out sequels? Well, first of all, I don't think Captain Marvel is going to join the Billion Dollar Club. I think it's going to make money. I think it's going to be a big hit, but I don't think it's going to join the Billion Dollar Club. Um, oh, then, then I have no idea. Because right, I, I have no idea what movies they're going to make that aren't sequels to ones that they've already got. Like, if you didn't say sequel, I would say another Thor movie coming off, off how hot Ragnarok was and how much everybody loved Thor in Infinity War. You do a standalone Thor movie... In the next couple of years, that one, that, you mark it down right now. That movie crosses the billion dollar mark. That movie joins the billion dollar club. Riding the momentum of Ragnarok and how everybody loved him in Infinity War, that movie makes a billion dollars. But if you're saying not sequels, then I have no idea because I, I, we have no idea what character's coming out next. We just don't. Other than Captain Marvel, so uh, I, 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 all I can say, watchers, I have no idea, no guess whatsoever. Uh, Shane Cutshaw writes, uh, shout out to my best bro Mitchell Brown, who has a cal calculus test today. Good luck, bro. John just bought my, just bought my bro the Harry Potter uh, box set, and we both agree that the third is our fave. Yours, you know, it's funny. I'm not a huge Potterhead. But it is really funny that I find most big Harry Potter fans, maybe not a vast majority, but I have found that most find the third Harry Potter film their favorite. And I like the Harry Potter movies. A couple of them I like a lot. But I'm not a huge Potterhead. 
While most people find the third film to be their favorite, it's actually, no kidding, it's my least favorite. I actually, it's the only Potter film I actually even don't like. I don't hate it. I, I'm not by any stretch. I do not hate it. Not by any stretch of the imagination. But I, I don't even think I like it. Uh, my favorite one is Deathly Hollows Part 2. The final film. Of the, I thought it was just masterfully done. And there's a number of very good Harry Potter movies. And overall, I like the franchise. But uh, yeah, oddly enough, 3 is my least favorite. But my favorite one is uh, the final one. Um... Uh, sleep, uh, Deathly Hollow. I was gonna say Sleepy Hollow Part Three. No, Deathly Hollows Part Two. That's my favorite one. Uh, let's see. Devonte Brown writes, John. What do you think of the old Agent Cody Banks movie? Not much. I, the old Agent Cody Banks movies. Not much. I, I, I remember I saw them. I don't recall hating them, but I also don't recall liking them. Like I think at most they were probably they were okay. They're okay. Nothing I ever felt the need or the impulse to go and watch again. Nothing I felt the need or the impulse to really trash on badly. But yeah, they were whatever. They were they were interesting little films. They didn't really work for me, but whatever. But I know a few people that actually quite like the old Agent Cody Brown movies. I don't know why, but I do know a few people that actually quite like them quite a bit. But that's the beauty of the subjectivity of film. All right. R Squared Games writes... Um, if the Fox deal goes through, would prefer solo movies first that build up to an Avenger-style X-Men movie, or should they lead uh, lead off with a team movie? Uh, sorry, I just got to make sure it's not my mom texting me because I got a, a bunch of text flying in. Oh, okay. Uh, there we go. Um, I mean, it really, it really depends. No, I'm going to take that back. It doesn't depend. The X-Men are different from the Avengers. Because Avengers are individual heroes that eventually came together to do a team and they call them the Avengers. X-Men, we know them as X-Men. Like, we don't think of Cyclops... You know, Scott, Cyclops didn't start off as a solo character. Jean Grey didn't start off as a solo character. You know, a lot of... The, we just think of the X-Men. And it shouldn't be looked at the same as the Avengers or anything like that. You just start off... It's kind of like this... Do you start off Guardians of the Galaxy with a solo Drax movie, a solo Gamora movie, a solo Groot movie, a solo Star-Lord movie, and a solo Rocket movie, and then do Gal Guardians of the Galaxy? No, you, you, Guardians of the Galaxy, boom, and it was awesome. <clears throat> this notion that you need, and I know this isn't what you're saying, R-squared, but there are people who have this notion that any movie about a group has to start with individual movies. Like, for instance, I think the Justice, I think Justice League could have led off the DCEU. You could have led off the DCU with a Justice League movie. You could have done the exact opposite of what Marvel did, and that could have worked great. Because you lead off strong, you make a good Justice League movie, and you start with a good Justice League movie, you don't have to do individual films first. They didn't need a solo Luke Skywalker movie, a solo Chewbacca movie, a solo Han Solo movie, a solo Ben Kenobi movie, a solo C-3PO movie, a solo Darth Vader movie, a solo Grand Moff Tarkin movie, a solo Princess Leia movie, and then you do Star Wars. Nah, you, you do Star Wars. You don't do all the solo movies for Guardians of the Galaxy. No, you just come out of the gate, do Guardians of the Galaxy. Boom, big team up movie. You didn't need individual setup movies for the individual characters first. You could have done that. And with X-Men, the point is accentuated even more that X-Men is the origin, really, of a lot of these characters. That is the origin. So, I mean, yeah, to me, it just far more makes sense that you lead off with X-Men. I mean, that's what they did back in 99. I think it was 99. Anyway, when you had the you didn't need a solo Professor Charles Xavier movie with a solo Magneto movie and then a solo Wolverine movie and a solo Cyclops movie and then you do X-Men. No, they made X-Men and it was it kicked off the golden era of comic book movies that we now enjoy. And then they did X-Men 2, which for a long time I thought was the greatest comic book movie of all time. It held that title, I think, for a number of years. Um, so, no, I, I don't think it would make any sense, particularly with an X-Men title. 
I don't think it makes any sense to do it with uh, doing individual films first and then, no, 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 X-Men is X-Men. You just lead off with X-Men. That's my opinion. That doesn't mean there's not a good way to do it the other way around. Yeah, you could do it the other way around and do some individual films and then do X-Men. You could, and that could work. But it makes far more sense to me and has a far greater chance of being good if you just lead off with X-Men. So anyway, that, that's my thoughts on that. Uh, is that it? That is it, guys. That's all the companion questions for this particular episode. We got more to do. We're going to do more companion videos over this weekend. Make sure you guys join us for that. But that'll do it for me for now. Hey, guys, listen, do me a favor. Great way to help this video and help this channel. Click the thumbs up button. That helps the videos out a lot. And it just takes a second. Just click on that. And also, leave your thoughts and opinions or ideas or comments on any of the topics we discussed here today. Jump down in the comments section and join the conversation. Just remember, when you do, we're all film fans together. Debate, have differences of opinion. That's awesome. But just remember, you're conversing with fellow film fans. So let's be good to each other as we're doing it. That'll do it for me for now, guys. Thanks a lot for joining me. My name is John Campia. And until my next video... Bye-bye.